you stink. You're a stinky little boy, aren't you? Well, I wasn't expecting to make this video. For those who don't know, around a month ago, I reconstructed a Tyrannosaurus Rex. The video did well, and most people were satisfied with it, but I didn't really like it. There was just something off about it. Normally this happens when a drawing is complete, and after a while you hate it. It's one of those things that plagues artists and is completely normal, but only after a couple of weeks seemed a little bit too fast. Upon closer inspection, I got a ton of details wrong, and that's... No good. Since I was making a series leading up to a nice paleo art piece, it was important that my depictions were accurate, and that I liked them. Otherwise, at the end I'd be like, What have I done? So I guess this is ironic in a way, cause I'm redesigning my T-Rex. You guys know the drill, let's discuss what I got wrong. Taking a closer look at this fella, it may come as a surprise that I was trying to reconstruct Stan. It looks a lot more like Scotty with the blunter snout, girth, and smaller arms. For a Tyrannosaurus. Besides that, there were some shortcuts I took since I rushed this piece out. For one, none of the teeth are visible. In the video, I used the Varanoid gummy mouth as an excuse, based on the new lip paper that came out and Mark Witten's blog post on this matter. In reality, I was just lazy. I do think that a gummy rex is possible, but not to this extent, I don't think. There's also the feet. I didn't finish them, but they were cropped slightly off frame, so nobody noticed anything. I also made the choice of not adding tarsal scoots. It's unlikely that T-Rex or most of the theropods had bird-like scoots on their hands and feet. These scoots are actually highly derived feathers that evolved back into scales and birds. However, I've been enlightened to the wonderful weirdo Concavenator. This thing is already so weird with the hump-like sail and odd quill knob slash muscle attachments on its arms, but it has tarsal scoots. So that's, that's cool. But I added the scoots to my Rex as a result. The last major mistake I made was not foreshortening the skull properly. And the reason I didn't do it right is because I referenced the AM&H specimen of T-Rex specifically this photo and as you can tell it doesn't look like stan that much because tyrannosaurus has very significant individual variation no t-rex looks the same even from just the bones so it didn't quite look right the proportions were wrong i didn't really convey it properly so i think we've piled on the poor guy for a bit time to actually start the drawing keeping with what i said in the first video i'm gonna make him a bit skinnier and maybe a bit leggier to make him look more inexperienced. And keep in mind, this reflects Stan's morphology a bit more since Stan is a gracile morph T-Rex and not a robust morph T-Rex. This, this used to be thought to be sexual dimorphism, like in Walking with Dinosaurs, but now it's just, we don't really know for sure. I also made the large maxillary feature scales more prominent instead of barely trying, like in the last one. So here's the sketch. As you can see, I've added scoots, but one thing I didn't do in my last drawing that I wanted to this time is scarring. I don't think that I did any scarring on my last one, except for maybe some faint ones on the face. But I thought I was trying to go a unique scar, like Crystal Planet, you have the tip of the tail gone, and that one on the thigh. The Buck T-Rex from The Lost World has the slash on its face. So I was thinking, what if when this guy was younger, they got attacked by a Dakota Raptor? And of course, Dakota Raptor has, he was probably using Raptor prey restraint. So what if maybe around the neck or back, there are like puncture marks or scratch marks like in the shape of like talons. Maybe the Dakota Raptor got him when he was a, a sub-adult and bit off more than he could chew and it escaped. You can have scars. I'll probably add that during the coloring phase.
So when I started coloring, I made a major shift in technique. The first time, I layered for a, I layered for a bit, but ultimately went for burnishing as soon as possible using my colorless blender Prismacolor. The problems are that A, the blending will be patchy and a bit faded from the added wax, which you can clearly see, and B, you can't really layer on top of it as the tooth of the paper is completely flattened, so it doesn't stick. That's why I didn't add many scars or interesting features to make this one stand out. This time, I actually took my time and layered, which is by no means not time-consuming, but in the end, the results will be much smoother and more well-structured. You know, I was just thinking, I've seen a red-headed T-Rex before, and I was like, where was I thinking of that? And... Oh no. Oh no. But also, do you guys remember that- there's this one dinosaur documentary where I don't remember much about it. There was like- it was like a pretty good T-Rex design. It was red. One of them got its tail bit off. I can't remember the name for the life of me. I want to say Jurassic CSI, but I don't think that was it. Well, yeah, I know there was the one um, James Gurney video he did about unconventional oil techniques, where he uh, painted a couple red t red head T Rexes. Man, red head red heads just look good on T Rex. Okay, I took a break from drawing and I'm looking at this thing, something's off with the head shape. And, well, because from where I'm sitting, I'm sitting on a desk, so there's a lot of parallax. So when you guys see this, I see, I see this, roughly, so it's not really accurate to what I'm looking at, which is annoying. But I think it's because this part of the jaw is a bit too, um, straight. I've looked at some references, and it should dip a bit more. Luckily, since I've been using a lot of Polychromos pencils, they are quite erasable, as you saw me erase in the time lapse, probably. So, so see if this doesn't turn out like shit. Yeah, there, that's better. Also, um, for the the second. The, the third part with Edmontosaurus and all of the other videos in this, in this series, I will edit them together into like a, do a super cut at the end. So for people who watch that, the, this will be like back to back with the other T-Rex drawing. So stay tuned. It's like an improvement immediately after. I should be cathartic when it comes out. If I ever finish this series. <laughs> I can't remember if I 
explained in my first video why I made the crests blue. And uh, the logic I was going on was basically, um, well, not only that they'd be brighter in the mating season, but also just that um, since blue is a structural color, you can't really produce blue pigment. I don't, I can't, I don't think animals can do that. Um, it's by light shenanigans. And like, if you know, if you've seen blue jays before, and I think we have a lot of blue jays here, um, they tend to do, they're not actually blue, their they're color is just, they're, well, blah, 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 blah. their feathers just look blue because their feathers are, have a structure that is conducive to reflecting blue light. But when they go into shade or in a specific angle in the light, they look grayish, they don't look blue. And that's kind of what my thinking was here. It's like, oh, the, the crests wouldn't be that visible to prey because they'd like be in the shade or like hiding. So light wouldn't touch it and you know, it would be gray, it would look gray. Again, it's going to be this case of like the baby will just stand with the uh, the mother and there's nothing I can do really. Just keep an eye on them. If they come this way, I could probably get a surprise attack. There's a T-Rex there.
and here we have our new and improved T-Rex. I'm sorry this video took longer than I thought. I did say in a community post it would come out last week, so yeah. But uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.